back to American Arms Channel, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Drake. As you can tell, we're back here at the reloading bench, and because of the title of the video, you know we are loading the Fury Bullet Company Fury Slug for the 10-gauge Magnum. Now, when you take a look at the slug offerings on the market for the 10-gauge, you're really not going to find much other than the factory-produced Remington slugs and, of course, the most excellent Warwolf Ordnance heavy hitter slug. And the thing that is, is slightly disappointing about both loadings, and not that either is a bad one, again, but for my purposes, what I found is that the slugs are actually slightly undersized. So, when you're running them through an improved cylinder or modified choke, you may not see very good accuracy. They're requiring modified, improved, modified, or full, at least, to achieve good feats of accuracy. That said, we pretty much have the choice between uh, the, the, the heavy hitter, which is more of a shuttlecock style, a rocket ball style slug, and the Federal, which is a true rifled foster slug. Well, Fury Bullet Company, while they don't offer an actual 10 gauge slug load, they do offer the one and a half ounce .775 caliber foster slug. It's a true 10 gauge foster slug. It is of a standard foster style with a very deep hollow base. It is going to obturate to the bore um, just slightly. In fact, when you drop it into a 10 gauge bore, if I drop it into my gold tens barrel, uh, it needs just so much effort, just a little bit of effort to travel down the barrel. So you've got a very, very properly sized 10 gauge slug that at an ounce and a half is going to do some damage. We're also going to get a higher velocity out of it, which means we can get a little bit flatter trajectory. And if you're hunting whitetail with your 10 gauge, an ounce and a half is more than enough. We all know that a three quarter or seven eighths ounce foster slug out of a 20 gauge is more than enough to take whitetail at 100 yards and less. With this, as long as your gun shoots it well enough, you should be able to take it well out past 125, 150. But again, you need to make sure that your gun and you are capable of that shot. So a disclaimer about this slug, I purchased these on my own. These are not um, these are not something that Fury Bullet Company sent to me as, as, a, as a product test. Uh, I'd seen them before. Honestly, for economy and as well as an actual design that I know will work, these are more accessible. For $42, you get 50 of them in a bag and... To be honest, how many you're going to shoot? You're probably going to load up enough for deer season after you play with them, get the load tuned in just right, and then you're probably going to put them away. But myself, because I like these, I'm going to stock up on them before y'all grab them up, and uh, there are no more to be had until you can make some more. But uh, they're made here in the states. Uh, you can email Fury Custom Bullets at, at FuryCustomBullets at gmail.com for more information, or you can go right to their website, FuryCustomBullets.com, and order through the website. So shipping was pretty quick. I'm pretty stoked about these. The 50 projectiles came in two separate bags and I've inspected just about every one of them. Extremely consistent. They've not been roughed up or banged up or anything. Um, they look to be a swaged bullet instead of a cast, which is great. Get great consistency out of that. Um, really, for such a, just a, a plain, lead projectile there, there's not a whole lot to talk about but he does have some other uh very interesting plated and jacketed bullets for the 12 gauge and 20 gauge as well uh, so take a look at those and uh maybe you'll find something you need for your handing load hand loading needs so as we've done before on the channel and taking a look at a 10 gauge load let's go over the components you're going to need first up is the remington polymer base wad hull uh in a fresh configuration, if you can find these at all, and of course I'm making this video in late spring of 2021, these are non-existent. Uh, pretty much you can only find them if you've already bought them or somebody at a swap meet has them or some craziness like that. They are not available online. Um, but I do, I will provide you the caveat that you, uh, you can either roll crimp, fold crimp. Uh, I've tried this out with fold crimp and roll crimp. Both have worked equally well. Neither one has showed pressure signs. Just adjust your fiber wad stack and your nitro card stack to, uh, to, to both achieve good accuracy as well as fit inside the hull. These full length hulls, however, will be required to trim down. I like to trim them to 3.45 to 3.475 of an inch. 
Uh, I use the Ballistic Products Trim Doctor to get that done quickly, and then I clean up any unevenness or any scrap that is left on top of the hull. These have not been cut yet. I will be doing that here for you on video. All factory hulls that you get from steel shot or turkey loads, and you're, if you want to use that for this slug load, those are perfectly fine as well. I've chosen the CCI number 209 standard primer, not the Magnum. I will tell you that this load, if you have a standard CCI Remington Federal, Winchester, uh, NSI, uh, Cheddai, any 209, any standard power 209 primer will work in this load. Of course, if you're developing off a of primer, I'm not demonstrating, as you should always anyways when taking a look at a load data from some guy on the internet that's not verified or pressure tested. Use what God gave you between your ears, think it through, reduce the charge, and work from there. Next up is powder, and what I've chosen is Hodgdon Long Shot. This is a very dense powder. It's a lot like kind of a metal flake. Um, very, very useful with magnum loads in the 12 gauge, 16 gauge, 10 gauge. Uh, there's uses in the 20 gauge as well. You can use it for standard field loads. You can use it for buckshot loads. You can use it for slug loads. Uh, it is an incredibly versatile powder. Now, you can potentially also use 3N38 by Vitavori. You can also use 800X. Uh, the blue powders, IMR Blue and Alliant Blue Dot, will also work with this. However, with an ounce and a half lead payload for this slug, your best velocities and your best results, cleanest burns, etc., will be with long shot. So there is that. I've chosen this powder. This is my only pound that I have, so I'm being fairly conservative with this, but this has been a great, great powder for my ounce and a half bismuth duck load out of the 10 gauge, as well as this now this slug load. But pretty much the ounce and a half payload in the 10 gauge is has been where this has shined for me. Your mileage may uh, vary, but awesome powder. Really enjoy using it. Very clean burning in this load. Very, very clean burning. Uh, fairly temperature sensitive. Uh, if you get down below 30 degrees on a hunting scenario, you may see some significant velocity differences, but generally um, this was going to do very well for you. Burn very clean. However, pretty significant report out of this load and a pretty good amount of muzzle flash. So with that said, we'll get to the notes afterwards, but um, long shot powder. After you throw your powder charge, you're going to want something to seal off that hull and prevent blow by. So we're going to need a gas seal, of course. This is the Ballistic Products X10X. It is a Guilani gas seal. So if you see on Precision Reloading or Graffin Sons or anywhere else you find your shot shell reloading components, a 10 gauge gas seal, it is nine times out of 10 going to be a Golani. Most of the time it's going to be labeled as a BPI X10X. Either way, it is a bi-directional gas seal. They're fairly inexpensive. They come 250 to a bag. I've actually combined a bag here, so it's a little bit heavier than it should be. Good component. Next up, we're going to use Ballistic Products Nitro Card 10. It's a simple 0.125 inch nitro card, you are going to use four of these in this load. Typically they come in a bag of about 500 or 1,000, uh, kind of hard to find here and there, but if you load 10 gauge, this is an absolute must have. If you see them, just buy yourself a bag because you never know when you're gonna be playing with a slug or some sort of black powder load. Um, very handy, fairly cheap. You'll need four of them for the load. We're going to follow that up, of course, with a fiber wad. Now this is the Precision Reloading FIB 1210 10 gauge fiber wad. Again, very cheap, just like the Ballistic Products Nitro wad, or excuse me, Nitro card, and they come 250 to a bag. This is the quarter inch, I believe, or excuse me, half inch. <laughs> That's definitely not a quarter inch. Half inch fiber wad, you're going to need two of them for a full inch of fiber wad. And then, of course, as we've already talked about in a little bit of detail, we have our slug. Uh, if you're casting your own uh, that's an ounce and a half that fits this style of profile, or you've bought a Fury slug, this load will work. Um, 
With that said, we're gonna go over a couple of tools that are going to help you load this guy up, and then we're going to go into some detail on the whiteboard of how to assemble this before I actually show you how to stack the load. First up, as always, when assembling, it always helps to have some form of a ball starter, ramrod, wad setter, whatever you wanna call it. Here's mine. Um, pretty much anything that's got a flat base has a dowel or a stick on it and can help you apply significant pressure or minor pressure to get a wad seated is going to help. Um, with a 10 gauge when using fiber wads and nitro cards, you might want to go with something with a bigger base, something that's more full that will fit. Um, also that will help is to utilize your press. I'll show you both ways here tonight. And of course, where would we be without our little handy dandy tools of a powder scoop and a powder funnel? Guys, if you're loading a lot and you don't have these small little components, just spend the few dollars it takes to get them shipped to your door and get yourself a couple. You don't need a lot of tools to precisely hand load great shot shells because shot shells are not entirely that precise to begin with, but get yourself some tools here. Make sure you have a good powder measure. I'm using a balance throw. You can use a digital throw. doesn't matter. Your mileage will vary. Your components, your selection of tools will vary, but the general principles will all apply. So powder scoop and powder funnel will help you out quite a bit. So just like we've done in previous load videos, we're going to hit the whiteboard real quick, and we're going to have a short discussion about what we need to do to make sure this load is particularly effective. Uh, make sure that we achieve the results we want, as well as allow me to explain to you why I'm setting load components in a certain way and what their function is. All right, so now that we've got the whiteboard up, we can take a look here. Now, this is a fairly good off-the-cuff drawing for me, so I'm gonna give myself a little round of applause there. <laughs> I hope it's pretty clear to you. But as we can see here, we have the assembled slug load. Now, before we go over the specific stacking of the components, I do want to hit load notes. Now, this is a new section starting on this video compared to prior load videos we've done. Load notes, we've got a velocity of 1,400 to 1,450 feet per second. Unfortunately, prior to the testing of this video, I had some difficulty uh, uh, testing out exactly the velocity. Um, my chronograph is not exactly the best. I need a pretty nice bright day. And... Unfortunately, I couldn't get myself set up safely on the range that I was utilizing uh, to back up far enough to not have the muzzle blast from this round toss the <laughs> uh, chronograph off the table and it was having trouble picking up anything. So when we do the shooting portion of this video, hopefully I will have a working chronograph that I can confirm some velocities. However, I do know from prior velocity tests with my one and a half ounce bismuth duck load that I actually throw a half to a full grain more of long shot powder under 1425 to 1450 foot per second in 50 degree weather. So in 70 degree weather, I expect a little bit faster, not much, but a little bit, but I am giving you that 50 foot per second range there. Utilizing the lower velocity for the 28 inch barrel of 1400 foot per second, we're going to assume that we have a muzzle energy of 2855 foot pounds quite a significant amount and if really if you're getting up towards the 1450 side of things you're going to see that jump up a little bit so we're getting towards that 3,000 foot pounds of energy um, and it's a heavy slug going downrange pretty damn quick she's going to penetrate quite a bit and, and transfer a lot of that energy so great great setup there you got the velocity you got the energy man if you've got a bear or a deer in front of you anywhere in North America Within 100 yards, I'd say this slug is probably going to do what it needs to do. Uh, first point of note is uh, lots of muzzle flash. So in low light conditions, that may be slightly distracting. Uh, however, compared to a lot of duck loads, if you're used to shooting uh, factory steel duck loads, those have a bit of muzzle flash because of the powder they're using. So not too big a deal, but do want to note that if you change powders, it will probably lower your velocity. Still an effective slug though, uh, 800X will probably give you fairly tamed muzzle blast. Pretty loud report, had double hearing protection on at one point, and uh, I could tell she was definitely roaring. So in the woods, I would 
I would recommend wearing passive hearing protection with this. Uh, three, very accurate for a foster slug out of a smooth bore with an improved cylinder choke. Uh, this seems to be very accurate. We're going to do some accuracy testing here at the end of the video to show you what kind of groups it can print at 50 yards out of my gun with an improved cylinder factory choke. Four, low recoil, an ounce and a half, even though it's going 1,400 to 1,450. In a 10 gauge that weighs nine to 11 and a half pounds, depending upon what gun you have, it's pretty mild. Um, it does not kick you as hard or as viciously as a three inch magnum, one ounce or one and a quarter ounce foster slug out of a seven to eight and quarter pound 12 gauge. That's simply physics, guys. Easy to keep on target. Um, I was just shooting offhand, putting a three shot group together at 25 to see how zeroed I was as well as see what kind of group I could shoot. And what I found was a very good amount of accuracy. I found it very easy to control. The muzzle blast was quite a bit. The, the report was quite a bit. But outside of those, I found the, the load to be exceptionally pleasant and a lot of fun. So if you shoot these, you might want to shoot a lot of them. So when you order these, get yourself 50 or 100 of these slugs and, you know, have some fun with them. Because, man, um, they're just a lot of fun. And you're going to load these up actually a lot cheaper than the federal slugs going at 3 to 4 or $5 a piece. And honestly, I think these are more versatile. With the notes taken care of here... We're going to discuss our components and the how and why. So, our stack is going to be the X10X, a single NitroCard 10, two fiber wads, then three NitroCard 10s, and on top, of course, our beautiful Fury Slug with a nice roll crimp. Again, you can fold crimp if you want. It shouldn't affect accuracy using a Saturn 209 once again. The reason for the stack, now obviously we have to have the X10X to gas seal down here at the bottom, but that is of the only plastic component in our entire wad stack. Now, you may ask, well, why would you put three on top and one on bottom with the nitro cards instead of the inverse of that, where three on bottom, one on top? And the reasoning I have is that these fiber wads have compression to them. If we take a look at this, it actually, you know, I can take my, my index and my thumb and I can, I can squish them quite a bit. And when you fire these, they will sometimes tear apart as they are a layered and fairly crumbly wad. Um, so the, the problem is if you butt this right up against the base of the slug, it could force itself into the cavity of the slug, causing a failure to obturate or inconsistent flight, tumbling. There's a whole series of things that go wrong. So of course we put a nitro card, a full size nitro card underneath that slug. Well, well, why can't we just do one and put these here? Well, my thought is that because these are the higher and taller wads in the whole stack, if they don't blow apart at the muzzle as the projectiles leaving they could potentially carry down range in the wake of the slug may cause accuracy concerns or potentially tumbling um it, how likely is that i probably pretty low but i'm a little bit ocd and i want to give this load every chance it can at, at a proper function uh so i have chosen to put these on the bottom and these three hard cards because they are light and they are thin are going to in theory kind of fly away after they leave the muzzle. So that is why I'm stacking them in this orientation. And now for reasoning on why we're choosing card wads and fiber wads instead of a plastic wad. Well, the fact of the matter is we don't have good or even in existence 10 gauge plastic slug wadding. It, it, it doesn't exist, especially not commercially. So we have to use fiber wads and we have to use nitro cards. If you dissect a federal one and three quarter ounce foster slug, rifled foster slug, you'll notice that the, the slug's pretty tall. You have a federal 10 gauge gas seal. Um, it's bi-directional. It doesn't have as many rings as the Guilani, the X10X, but it's a pretty good looking load um, or a pretty good looking component for the load. And then you have federal's slightly taller quarter inch nitro card. You have about four or five of those in the stack, and they stack up to the top of the slug. There's two things that this is going to do, though. You've got a, you're, you're kicking that slug in the butt pretty hard. You're transferring all of that shock from the powder igniting and creating that gas pressure 
in that volume, you know, it's shoving it down the barrel. There's there's not that much cushion to a nitro card, if any at all. It's a lot like a plastic wadding, except it's not really flexible. Um, it sort of hits, it, it may expand a little bit, squish a little bit to full bore, but it's it's not really going to give a lot of cushion to that to that that slug. If you take a look at old time, and I say old time by you know 50s, 60s, 70s slugs, where pre plastic wadding, you'll see that they have a felt or a fiber or a uh, some sort of a cotton wadding underneath some hard cards that are underneath the slug that bring everything up to stack. And those are actually fairly soft shooting and very accurate slugs out of smooth bores. So we've gone away from that with commercial production slugs. We've gone to full plastic wadding. They provide good accuracy out of the foster slugs, but they are a little bit rough on recoil. They're a little bit more powerful, but they also are a little bit more jarring to that projectile and to your shoulder. So the concept here behind running a fiber wad of any type in a 12, a 10, a 16, a 20, any, any gauge slug, is that you're going to not only cushion the slug slightly, in a slug that doesn't need to obturate to bore, uh, especially like this, it doesn't need a lot of obturation to fit the bore, so we don't need to smack it in the ass that hard. And generally, if you don't smack it that hard, it will assist you in accuracy and consistency. And if you want to experiment with your Fury slug load, Go right ahead, really alternating this in any way, doing a nitro card or two, then a fiber wad, then a nitro card, then a fiber wad, then a nitro card, um, or doing three on the bottom or four on the bottom, two nitro. Whatever you want to do, you can re you can rearrange this and just test it out. You may find better or worse uh, results than I do with my stack, but the flexibility is there. But this is what I'm doing, and this is what I'm going to recommend to you if you are assembling this specific load. All right, so let's get started on putting this load together. So, as I said, I would demonstrate to you the trim doctor. Now, what I'm doing is I'm only taking off about uh, an eighth to a sixteenth of an inch. So what I've done is I've taken two trimmings, covered them in black just so I know to keep them, and put them in. I put them in my trim doctor here. And so when I insert a hull, I'm only taking off the same amount there, so I'm not taking off a full quarter inch uh, to three eighths of an inch. But what I do is I just insert it, I press, I turn, press, and I found that instead of spinning it, I turn it and just clip it, and just keep on clipping through there with that razor blade. And this is kind of my new little trick that I've, I've figured out, for me at least. And then I just spin it just a little bit, just to make sure that cut's getting through there, you know. Keep consistent pressure. I'm sorry you guys can't really see this super well, but once that's done, I've got to pretty much cut through. So I'm going to take my little X-Acto knife here and get through there. And usually she comes right off. I didn't do a super awesome job on this one. But it helps me keep that hull a little bit better, uh, in a little bit better shape on the mouth and to trim off any excess and make sure it's pretty even. So there we go. So we've got that one trimmed down too. And again, well, the reason we're doing this, is, this is not, a, is not a step that'll typically be required of most hulls, but it is something you need to do with fresh Remington hulls that have not been pre-cut because they are in excess of 3.5 inches. And if you have a repeating shotgun or a semi-automatic 10 gauge, it may not agree with it very well. So your mileage may vary, but keep that in mind. All right, next up, we're going to take our hull here. I've got 43 grains of long shot powder. We're just going to pour that right on in. First up, I'm going to take our Gulani gas seal. Drop that guy right down on in there. And these Remington hulls, that, that uh, X10X gas seal there, that uh, is a very tight fit. You probably heard it hiss as it uh, pushed the air out. Got it nice, well seated against the powder. Next up, we're going to take a Nitro Card 10. Now this thing is a full bore Nitro Card, so it wants to twist. Uh, that's where a larger sized rammer will help, but if you know what you're doing, you can get that seated right there and it will help. Again, if you have something like a Mac Press that I have, and I'll show you the next hull here, uh, how I, I insert this stack, but that will help you out a lot too in being able to provide consistent pressure down on these wads and really get them set hard against the powder. 
Next, fiber wad. It has a basically a, a completely flat end and one a radius end. I put them both in at the same time using radius end first, just kind of helps me. And I just force them in there with my thumb, taking a little bit off on the sides. It's not a big deal. You can also just drop it back in the hull, push them down a little bit. And then I put another nitro card in, get that set up. And then that's when I start to compress with this hand tool here, the, the fiber wads. And you do want to make sure that that stack is pretty tight. You may see a little bit, just a very small touch of ribbing from the nitro cards. Don't worry about that. That's not going to affect your reliability of the hull or adversely affect pressures. These are just full size nitro cards in uh, Winchester and Cheddite hulls. They are actually just about perfect and they don't really bulge out that much because those have a little bit larger internal diameter. So we'll get our third one in here, get that stacked. And this is part of the reason why I use a press is because I've got, I get much more even, um, even set up there stacking those. So I'm just gonna take a look here and make sure I don't have any air gaps, that's great. Now I'm gonna take my slug, insert it. It's a very tight fit, push it down. We can see we've got a pretty good, pretty good little stack right there. Next, we're gonna take our roll crimper. This is cold, so we'll let it spin for a second. Uh, I've just got it on my hand drill right now. If you have a drill press, that is preferred. However, with the slugs, the nice thing is because it is a tapered nose, you actually can get a little bit nicer of a crimp a little bit easier. So we're gonna see if that actually holds out or if I'm gonna jinx myself here. And that is, that's a fairly damn even hull right there. I did, uh, did get her just a little bit leaned, but that's all right. And honestly, you can trim this hull down further if you want, uh, but I do like having that full, full height, um, almost too much for a fold crimp there, uh, just to make sure the slug has good, it has good bearing on the slug and you're not going to get any shake from cycling in the gun or just shooting the gun while this thing's traveling through the tube. This is a fairly short guy here. If I grab a duck load I've got just sitting over here, you can see it's just a touch lower. Um, I'm not going to show you on the calipers right now, but the overall length of this load in this hull with this BPI roll crimp is going to come out to be 3.08 inches with small variation, of course, but 3.08 inches, about the same height as a factory Winchester load, which my Gold 10 and all Gold 10s love quite a bit uh, because they were pretty much designed around it. So this is a great, great stack. And, you know, we're running such a short slug for the bore, to be honest. Uh, you know, we don't have this big, tall payload stack. We're just worried about getting our, our hard cards and our fiber wads in there all tight. So not a big deal at all that it is slightly shorter than some of your more magnum two and a quarter and two and a half ounce fine shot loads. As I said, I'd show you how I do this on my Mech 600 Junior. Uh, I've already got the powder in the hull, so we're just going to get right into it. Here's the wad guide right here. I'm going to take my X10X. Golani gas seal. I'm going to press her on down in. Then I'm going to take a nitro card, get her started, and press her on down in. Fiber wad. Send it home. Fiber wad. <laughs> Send her home. And at this point, she's going to start getting stiff and not let me throw completely because the wad height is getting pretty tall. So I'm just going to make sure that I keep throwing it all the way down. And I'm not worrying about seating the gas seal because as I stack more wads here, I'm going to get better and better compression. And I am pushing it all the way down. This last one won't quite let me, there we go. Okay, I did get her to ram down, but she doesn't collapse the hull at all. And as we can see inside, hopefully, there is our wad stack. And so now I'm going to take my Fury Slug, set it in the wad guide, 
and get her started. If she'll start, make sure she's lined up and give it a good little amount of compression there. And there we go. She'll leave a little ring on top of the slug, but that's not going to bother it because we're going to send it down range at uh, 1400, 1450 feet per second. So who cares if the front of it is a little bit marked? Well, guys, there we have it. Our very own 10 gauge, three and a half inch, one and a half ounce, 1400 to 1450 foot per second Fury slug. Man, I, I tell you what, this is just plain fun. And I'm really excited to be able to take a deer with this this fall. To be honest, I got really lucky with creating this load. It came together um, fairly quickly. Once I got the slugs, I, I took about one evening to think through the powder charge, to look at the stacks, to look at what uh, it was successful in the same style of, of projectile for 12 gauges and 16 gauges. But for my purposes for whitetail, which is generally what I would be using this style of a slug for, um, or light black bear even, an ounce and a half sounded right. And getting it up towards, not quite at, but up towards that 1,500 foot per second velocity, you know what? That, um, that spoke to me. And it is possible to get these to 1,500, but I don't know that it's necessary. You're sending an ounce and a half projectile downrange. You're achieving anywhere from 2,800 to 2,900 slash maybe 3,000 foot pounds of energy at the muzzle. It's very hard hitting. So... I think personally that that 1400, 1450 foot per second number is about is about perfect for, for the application. But again, you can play with your load. Um, perhaps something like the Vitavori 3N38. Uh, this might be a, a powder that works well for a 1500 foot per second load. I haven't played with that yet. I'm sure I will at some point, but... Um, I decided to go off of what I knew would work for an ounce and a half, which was the long shot powder. And I, I just one of those things I happened upon the right charge um, right off the bat. So with that said, no more dilly dallying. Let's get to the range. Let's put a few of these on the board and see what kind of accuracy we can achieve. Well guys, that range session was a lot of fun, but I shot absolutely horridly, so I'm not going to take into consideration my accuracy portion of the test. But Dad pulled off some pretty good shots, so let's see how he did. Here at 50 yards, the improved cylinder choke out of the Gold 10, he fired a 3-inch, three 3-shot three group, which is very acceptable for slugs, and he is completely convinced that he could have shot better if he had a scope, or if the gun was better rested. Here we pull back and we see that I was able to stack one or two shots on top of each other and there was always a third. That was my shooting for the day. Absolutely terrible, so I'm not taking it into consideration. But Dad also put them through his Spanish double and we took a four-shot group. 
two out of each barrel. And here we can see that we're a little bit high above the target and that the right barrel shooting left and the left barrel shooting right, which makes sense seeing how this gun is approximately regulated to fire a 60, 40 to 70, 30 group at 40 yards. So this is really great accuracy and he definitely pulled the leftmost shot. Recovered slugs are excellent. They traveled through the quarter inch rubber backer and smashed into the dirt pile behind, absolutely dropping all of their energy in the process, which is exactly what we want for light black bear, white tailed deer, and mule deer. So pretty much most game animals in North America can be taken by the slug and it's going to dump all of its energy. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and as always, like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, God bless, keep your powder dry.